If you've got golfer's elbow, I'm gonna share how you can go from this to this. And I'll share how I beat golfer's elbow whilst putting on 20 pounds of muscle, meaning that I didn't have to stop my gym workouts or shelve my goals. In this video, I'll share my story, why rest will not fix golfer's elbow, and I'll teach you the self-physical therapy that I use to speed up recovery, plus all the adjustments that I made to my workouts so that I could keep training to build strength and muscle whilst fixing my golfer's elbow at the same time. To get the full strategy, download the golfer's elbow rehab blueprint. It's free, just click or tap the screen there to get it. All right, golfer's elbow, medial epicondylitis or inflammation to the tendons of the wrist flexors that connect onto the medial epicondyl here. So you're going to feel it here when you do any kind of pulling movement. You can feel it when you're opening a door. I used to feel it when I was like doing dishes and things like that. It's absolutely horrible. It completely stops you from doing your training if you don't know how to deal with it. My story, I got golfer's elbow for the first time, I think about nine years ago when I started doing calisthenics. I'd never really done that much upper body strength work before and I started feeling pain in there and I just pushed through it. I just kept on going with my workouts until eventually I couldn't do anything that involved pulling. Like if I went onto a pull-up bar and tried to pull like that, it was agony. I couldn't pick up dumbbells or anything. Fortunately for me, I know some incredible sports physical therapists that were working in Unity Gym at the time and they helped me to understand exactly how to deal with golfer's elbow and I was able to overcome it. It took me nine to 12 months the first time, completely symptom free for about seven years. And then last year when I was working on building muscle, I was trying to put on as much muscle as I could last year, it came back. But this time around, I knew exactly how to deal with it and I was able to keep training and adjust my workouts to not only fix my golfer's elbow, but to be able to still put on 20 pounds of muscle and build my strength in the same year. And I'm gonna share with you guys exactly how I did it. The first thing to understand about golfer's elbow is that it's come from an abusive load and it's most commonly, it comes from chronic abusive load, meaning basically, the tendons of the wrist flexors or the wrist flexors aren't strong enough to handle what you're doing. And it usually happens over time from repeated abuse. It can happen as an acute injury, but I've always dealt with chronic cases of golfer's elbow. Now this is really important. Rest does not fix golfer's elbow because you basically weren't strong enough for what you were doing. So when you rest, the inflammation will go down and you might not experience the symptoms after a few days, but then as soon as you try and do any of the things that you used to do that brought on the pain, it's just gonna come back with a vengeance. And it'll actually be even worse because the more you rest, the more strength and muscle mass you'll lose everywhere else in the body. So the idea that rest will fix golfer's elbow is completely flawed. You must train through it, but we need to do several things that I'm gonna outline now in order to make sure that it doesn't get worse and that it gets better. For my golfer's elbow program that I write for anybody in our UMS online personal training that comes up with golfer's elbow, we need to strengthen the wrist flexors. So the wrist flexors need to become stronger. We also need to strengthen all of the pulling muscles. So think biceps and lats. We need to strengthen the scapula stabilizers as well. And it's also good to include some grip strength as well. So grip crushing and weight plate pinching. The golfer's elbow is a global issue. It's a problem going on with your whole kinetic chain from your fingers right through to your shoulder because it's basically the work that you were doing, the wrist flexors were taking too much of the load and that's where the golfer's elbow came about. So you can't just strengthen the wrist flexors to get rid of golfer's elbow. You've got to strengthen the whole unit. So I break down my golfer's elbow rehab training into five phases really. And at phase one, at the grassroots level, when you're feeling pain and you can't go to the gym or you can't do rock climbing or whatever it is you like to do because the pain's so bad, we need to severely deload the wrist flexors, but we also need to make them stronger. So here's how we do that. I use some hook wrist wraps like this to be able to deload on all pulling movements. So you wrap those around your wrist and then these can take my entire body weight. So I was hanging like this so that my fingers basically weren't doing anything and all the weight was going into my wrist. And any kind of pulling movement, anything that you can do that is going to eliminate the wrist flexion component of it, is going to really help to deload the wrist flexors so that you can continue to work out. Next is to replace pull-ups with ring rows. Pull-ups are a no-go in the earlier phases of golfer's elbow because it is so hard to deload those wrist flexors on them. And the reason I love ring rows in this phase is because number one, it puts your arms into a semi-supinated grip. And number two, it's still a closed kinetic chain movement. So it transfers to pull-ups a lot better than an open kinetic chain movement like a bent over row. A ring row is also really easily scalable. You can 
make it much harder or much easier by simply moving your feet forward or moving your feet back. So you can get to a really good position where you can control your scapular retraction and then the pulling whilst keeping your elbows in. Whereas other exercises are not as easy to control the intensity so well. Next step in phase one is to use a semi-supinated grip wherever possible. So all bicep curls work, all pulling work, everything you wanna use a semi-supinated grip. And the reason why is because that deloads the wrist flexors a lot and it also brings the brachioradialis into your pulling movements so that you're able to keep training the pulling pattern but without making the golfer's elbow worse. Next, don't use slow controlled eccentrics. The eccentric phase of a contraction, so basically, basically when the muscles are lengthening, that's what puts the most load onto the muscle fibers and onto the tendons. So slow eccentrics are in the last part of golfer's elbow rehab. But at the same time, you don't wanna do anything fast and explosive. Fast changes from concentric to eccentric by trying to use, say, the stretch shortening cycle with pull-ups is something that makes golfer's elbow way worse. So you don't wanna do a slow three second eccentric in the early phases of golfer's elbow rehab, but you also don't wanna be going fast and just doing rows and pulling movements like this. Next is to reduce volume. So golfer's elbow happens from an abusive load. So one of the first things we need to do is try to reduce the load on those tendons. And a part of that is reducing volume. So if you're doing three, four pull days or, or days that involve your grip in a week in the gym, then just by simply reducing the amount of days, you, you might find that your symptoms subside. But also we need to look at reducing the amount of sets you do within a workout. So in phase one of my golfer's elbow rehab programs, we reduce the amount of sets that we do and we also manage the amount of workouts that you do in a week where you're using those muscles. Now it's actually normal and even something that you should be shooting for to feel a two to four out of 10 pain when you do the workout because you wanna be stimulating growth in or you know adaptation within the tendons. So feeling a two to four out of 10 pain is actually a good thing. But what we look for is we want the baseline level of pain to be going down. So you've got your baseline level of pain where when you, you know, open the door or when you're doing dishes or when you go to pick something up and you know what that level of pain is with your golfer's elbow. If you do a workout and you think, oh yeah, that's a two to four out of 10 pain that I'm feeling, but then the next day, the baseline level of pain is worse, then you went too hard. And then you need to consider manipulating any of these five variables within your workout. So this is very important. These are the five variables that you've got to manipulate when it comes to any injury really. First is range of motion. So simply by changing the range of motion, you might find that you can continue to do an exercise without pain. Next is the intensity. By reducing the amount of weight that you're lifting, you might be able to continue doing the exercise without pain. Next is the volume. We just spoke about volume. So volume can be reducing the amount of reps per set, reducing the amount of sets per workout, or reducing the amount of workouts per week. Next is tempo. We just spoke about tempo. By changing the tempo, you, you might find that you can continue doing your workouts. And then last is exercise complexity. And an example of that is going from a pull-up to a ring row. So those five variables, when you, even with a golfer's elbow program that I would write for you as someone in the UMS online personal training tribe, you would still need to take this on board for yourself. So you do a workout and the next day it feels a little bit worse. You'd wanna communicate with me, let me know what you're feeling and then we figure out which one of those variables you can adjust or how many of them we can adjust for your next workout so that that baseline level of pain doesn't keep getting worse. And this is something that you will kind of have to feel out within the first week or two of doing your golfer's elbow rehab program. Phase two is really where we just try to increase the intensity a very small amount. We'll start adding more intense exercises like pull-ups, but we start with less sets. So in week one, we might start with just one day of pull-ups doing two sets. And then if that goes well and your baseline level of pain doesn't get work, worse, then in week two, we'll add a second day of pull-ups, two sets, and then you'll go to three sets in week three on both those days, and then maybe four sets as well. But you absolutely are still only using a semi-supinated grip. 
a supinated grip will just blow that golfer's elbow right out again. It just puts way too much load on it. And a pronated grip can even be quite challenging on the golfer's elbow. And then in phase three, the only thing that I would change is to now remove the hook wrist wraps. So in phase two, you're still using those hook wrist wraps even on your semi-supinated grip pull-ups. And then in phase three, the only thing we change is we remove those and see how your body adapts to that. One thing that I forgot to say earlier on as well is that another way that you need to deload your golfer's elbow is by avoiding anything that puts pressure on your hand like this. So anything that puts a hand on the ground like that. So handstands, push-ups, any planche work, L-sits, anything like that. What that does is that actually stretches out the tendons over the bone and that can increase the inflammation of the golfer's elbow. So in phase one, you would be using parallettes for anything that you would otherwise be putting your hand on the ground like that. In phase four, we now remove the parallettes and see how you go. And then in phase five, the final phase, we start to increase the eccentric contraction time. The actual programming that you'd have will, will differ from person to person because you know there's people out there that can do muscle ups and pull ups and things like that and they get golfer's elbow. They're gonna have a different program to somebody who's just starting out at the gym and who's got golfer's elbow. So that's where customized programming comes in that we give to all of our members in the UMS online personal training. So you've just gotta make sure that through this process of all these five phases that you commit, keep the communication open with your coach, someone like me who's been through this process before so that that you're always moving forward. Okay, now we're, let's have a look at the manual physical therapy that you can do daily. And this is something that I've found to be very useful. So the first thing is a physical therapy band like this. You can get these on Amazon. And what we're gonna do is we start just below the elbow. This is so much easier to do if you can get someone else to do it, but I've had to learn how to do it myself. Now, I want you to take note of how tight I do this. I do this so tight because the idea here is to wrap so tight around your arm that it forces blood out of the tendons that have low blood supply. Tendons do not get as much blood circulation as muscles do. And, you know, blood exchange, blood circulation is healing. You know, you, you, you need it. You need to be getting circulation to increase or decrease the, the time of recovery. And so what I've done, I've wrapped up just above the elbow and now I'm going back down over the elbow. And this is so tight that the first few times that I did this, it was unbearable. I remember my friend that showed me how to do this when he was doing it to me. I was like, oh my God, I can't handle that. And he said, you know, you've got to handle it. You've just got to allow this to happen. And so you, you tuck it in and then you're basically flossing the muscles. You're flossing the tendons. So we're going to pull the wrist into flexion and come right up here. So I'm, I'm flossing the whole kinetic chain. So I'm flexing my shoulder, I'm flexing my elbow, flexing my wrist, and then I'm extending my wrist, extending my elbow, extending my shoulder, holding for a second or two. And you just do between four and six reps of this. And I like to do this two or three times a day because you're really just trying to stimulate this blood flow into those tendons as much as you can. So this is something that I have found to be very, very useful to do multiple times through the day. And if you look at this, I wonder if the camera will pick this up. I might come closer here. If you look at the, the blood flow back into my arm, so you watch, you'll see it's all white. And then the blood, you'll see the blood rush back in now. Okay, so that's really, really useful. And then next, we're just gonna use one of these little massage balls, and we're basically going to put it all down through the wrist flexors here. So you start at the wrist, put your other arm on top so you can get more pressure, and then you just floss the muscles, going back and forth like that, move up a little bit. And I just try and think of doing like about five different spots. So that's two. By the third one, I'm kind of halfway between my wrist and my elbow and then four, and you find the, try to find the spot where it feels sore, flossing those muscles, and then right up the top. And even just that much, doing that once a day can really help with the golfer's elbow. To get access to the full strategy, grab the golfer's elbow rehab blueprint, just click or tap the screen to get it. And if you've got any questions, hit me up, of course. And I've got some other great videos on golfer's elbow, so you can check out one of those videos there, and I'll see you in that next video.